Good Tuesday, everyone. I'm Cyrus Webb, and welcome to Conversation Daddy News. Glad you all could be with us. Of course, you have your news headlines coming up on this Tuesday. Have a message from my book, Words I Choose to Live By, and in today's news you can use. Yesterday, I had a chance to speak with Dr. Merle Griff. She talked to us about the needs of caregivers. It's found in a new survey and what we can do to support them. You don't want to miss that. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Conversation Daddy News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Tuesday headlines in international news. King Charles diagnosed with cancer, says the Associated Press. The news comes a week after both Princess Kate and the King were discharged from a private London clinic after medical procedures. King Charles III, 75, has been diagnosed with cancer and will be avoiding public events after being advised by his doctors to minimize in-person contacts, Buckingham Palace announced on Monday. The announcement marks a striking departure from the past when monarchs' ailments were often hidden from the public, according to royal experts. During the king's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted, the palace said in an email statement. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. The statement also did not specify what stage the cancer was found. Separately, Buckingham Palace said Charles did not have prostate cancer. The news comes a week after both Kate and King Charles were diagnosed from a private London clinic after medical procedures. The king underwent a corrective procedure for an enlarged prostate, while Kate has an unspecified abdominal surgery on January 17th. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he has been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties, the statement added. According to the statement, the king wanted to share his diagnosis in part to avoid speculation on his condition, but also in the hope it may assist public understanding for all those around the world who are affected by cancer. Before becoming king, Charles served as a patron to a number of cancer-related charities, and in this capacity, His Majesty has often spoken publicly in support of cancer patients, their loved ones, and the wonderful health professionals who help care for them, according to Buckingham Palace. No further details are being shared about his treatment or prognosis, a palace spokesperson said, but the king returned to London on Monday to begin outpatient care. In national news, Bob Beckwith, retired firefighter and famous image with Bush after 9-11, dies at age 91. Bob Beckwith, a retired firefighter whose chance encounter with the president amid the rubble of Ground Zero became part of an iconic image of American unity after the September 11th terrorist attacks has died. Beckwith died Sunday night in hospice care after dealing with cancer in recent years, his wife Barbara Beckwith said on Monday. Wearing his old firefighter helmet from Ladder Company 164 in Queens, the Long Island resident stood with President George W. Bush as he delivered a rousing speech to weary responders three days after hijackers crashed airplanes into the Twin Towers of the Old World Trade Center, killing 2,753 people. He was just lucky. He was at the right place at the right time, and that's why he's famous, Barbara Beckwith said Monday by phone from the couple's home in Baldwin, a suburb about 30 miles from Manhattan. But he was a regular guy, well-liked and quiet, just a regular Joe, she said. In more national news, family of black girls handcuffed by Colorado police held at gunpoint reached $1.9 million settlement. The black girls lay face down in a parking lot crying no and mommy as a police officer who had pointed her gun at them then bent down to handcuff two of their wrists. The youngest wore a pink tiara that she held onto her teenage cousin's hand. The six-year-old Lovely watches her mother, Brittany Gillum, was led to a patrol car in handcuffs after she shouted in frustration at the police, who mistakenly believed the car she was driving was stolen. Three years later, Gillum has agreed to a $1.9 million settlement with city officials in the Denver suburb of Aurora to settle a lawsuit that claimed the officer's actions were evidence of profound and systemic racism a lawyer for the family announced on Monday. I feel like those children deserve everything for what they have been through, not just me, Gillum said prior to the settlement. In entertainment news, Grammys are Taylor Swift's world on a night when women like Cyrus, Mitchell, and Chapman also shine. It's Taylor Swift's world, says the Associated Press, and she just allows us to live in it. After weeks where she attracted endless attention for a football star boyfriend and a mystifying right-wing campaign against her, the Grammy Awards put the focus squarely back on her art. Midnight's earned Swift her fourth career Grammy for Album of the Year on Sunday, an achievement no one can match. It breaks a tie with Frank Sinatra, 
Paul Simon and Stevie Wonder, who each won the honor three times. And finally, in business news, Wall Street drifts lower from all-time high as cuts to rates look further off, says the Associated Press. U.S. stocks are edging lower from their record levels on Monday, following more evidence that the economy remains stout. The S&P 500 was down 0.1% in late trading, coming off another all-time high and another winning week. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was down 179 points, or 0.5%, after earlier being down as much as 400 points. The Nasdaq Composite was virtually unchanged, with roughly an hour remaining in trading on Monday. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's on time for a message from my book, Words I Choose to Live By. Enjoy. Good to see everyone, and welcome to Words I Choose to Live By. Your joy should not be dependent on where you live, how much you have, or who you know. True joy comes from the satisfaction that you are living the life you were intended to live, using each and every opportunity to recognize the blessing of seeing another day. Have an amazing Tuesday. We are part of our conversation coming up with Dr. Merle Griff in today's news you can use. Stay with us for listening to Conversation Daily News. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your news you can use. Dr. Merle Griff joined me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about this newest survey data that looks at caregivers and their needs. Here's a bit of our conversation. Dr. Griff, thank you again for the time. Really do appreciate it. Oh, well, thank you for having me, Cyrus. Yeah, this is an important topic. I should mention for audience that don't know, February is recognized for a lot of things, but February the 16th is actually National Caregivers Day, so it's great to have that as an opportunity to be able to talk about the impact of caregivers. But Dr. Griff, let's start with the survey I mentioned. Tell us a little bit about some of the, the data that stood out to you. Some of the survey that really stood out was uh, two things, really. I think the majority of family caregivers uh, are really having a significant financial impact. Many of them are working, and so they've had to cut their hours or, in many cases, had to leave their jobs. And so what this means is a large majority, about 72%, have had to cut back on spending for necessities. And that means cutting back on food and cutting back on prescription medications. The other thing that really stood out to me uh, in the OTSA survey is that a large majority of family caregivers are really younger, I I think, than we thought. Uh, They're of the millennial and Gen X generations which means they're between the ages of 35 and 49. Um, And so they have family caregiving responsibilities for a parent or a grandparent in addition to raising their children, in addition to working and having careers. Yeah, such great information there. So it it is something that so many people are impacted by, Dr. Griff, you yourself having been a caregiver. What advice can you share with caregivers out there to help them? It's very important to refuel. You can continue to care for someone else when you're running on empty, um, when you haven't had enough sleep and you're not eating properly. And I know that sounds very difficult. I know that as a family caregiver myself, when I heard that advice, um, it's very, very frustrating because you feel as though you just don't have time to do that. I mean, it sounds impossible. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversation Daily News. But up to tomorrow, more news, message from my book, Word That Choose to Live By, and of course, our entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversation Daily News today. Let us go make today amazing. Take care.